Hello everyone, welcome to today's event. Opera Orlando presents The Secret River. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're gonna learn about the Opera Orlando's upcoming production of The Secret River. It premieres its first commission new work on the main stage, The Secret River, an opera for all audiences based on author Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings, The Secret River. Music by Stella Sung with a libretto by Mark Campbell. Opera Orlando's mission is to engage and entertain Central Florida audiences through the transformative experience of opera. To learn more, please visit operaorlando.org. And we'll be placing Opera Orlando's website in the comments for everyone, so you'll be able to access that. Before we begin, allow me to share some information about Marjorie Kinnan Rollins. Pulitzer Prize winning author of The Yearling and literary icon Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings was an American short story writer and novelist who founded a regional literature of Backwoods, Florida. It is said not until her decision in 1928 to buy and settle a 40 acre orange grove near the hamlet of Cross Creek in northern Florida that she began to find her literary voice and you'll see that influence throughout her later works. Marjorie Kinnan Rowlings lived for 25 years in Cross Creek, Florida. Soon after she arrived at the farmstead, the Great Depression occurred. It swept our country. It was the worst economic downturn in the history of the industrial world. And you can also see that influence in her later work as well. Her book, The Secret River, is a depression error story that is just as timely as it, is, as it is enchanting. It's a stunning picture book for all ages, illustrated by Leo Dillon and Diane Dillon. We follow protagonist Calpurnia as she tries to soften hard times. There's just not enough. Not enough money. Not enough food. Not enough fish for daddy to sell at the market. You can check out Marjorie Kinnan's Rawlings books from the library. We'll add the direct link to the river, to the secret river in the comments. Today, we have Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings with us and she will be discussing her book, The Secret River, and will be taking questions at the end of her presentation. Marjorie, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you could join me today so that you can hear all about my wonderful book, The Secret River. I'm so excited that it's going to be an opera very soon. And I would love to read the story to you and show you the beautiful illustrations. But before we start, I wonder if anybody has ever wondered about, if I were going to write, what would I write about? Sometimes it's very, very hard to know what the right thing to write is. So I took the advice of another great writer, Mark Twain, who said, write what you know. So I decided, okay, what do I know? I know wonderful people here in Cross Creek. I know the struggles that they've been through. I know how beautiful nature is. And why did I put all of that into a story about overcoming hard times through the use of your imagination and trying to care for your community and just be as resourceful as you can and try to try make the hard times soft times. So I'm going to start reading my wonderful book. This is The Secret River. There is a dark forest far away in Florida. The trees are so tall that the sky is like a blue veil over their leafy hair. There is a path through the forest. It leads to the home of Calpurnia and Buggy Horse. Calpurnia is a little girl and Buggy Horse is her dog. Her name is Calpurnia because she was born to be a poet. Buggy Horse is a peculiar name, but even when he was a puppy, his back dipped in the middle and he had an enormously fat stomach, just like a little old Buggy Horse. He could not possibly have been called Rex or Rover or any other name for a dog. Calpurnia wrote her first poem about him. My dog's name is Buggy Horse. Of course, not all poems are long. And here's a picture of the woods and Calpurnia with Buggy Horse.
On the morning when this story begins, Calpurnia was awakened very early. Outside her window, two redbirds were singing to each other. They sang so loud that she heard them in her sleep and she woke up. She listened and she decided that one redbird was singing, love me, love me, love me. And the other bird was singing, sure do, sure do, sure do. Calpurnia looked over the side of her bed. Buggy Horse was still sound asleep. She said to him, wake up, my dear dog. I have a feeling something special is going to happen today. Buggy Horse just stretched himself and yawned. He was a lazy dog. He liked to sleep for hours and hours, sometimes in the sunshine and sometimes in the shade. He hoped Calpurnia was not getting ready for an adventure. He was obliged to follow her wherever she went because he was miserable when she was out of his sight. Calpurnia washed her face and hands and brushed her teeth and combed her hair. Because of her feeling, she put on her best pink hair ribbon. She made her bed neatly. Here she is putting on her hair ribbon and there's Buggy Horse. She went out of doors with Buggy Horse and saw that it was indeed a beautiful day. The sun was shining and the oranges on the trees were bright as balls of gold. She said a poem, lovely day, come what may, if I did not love my mother and my father, I would run away because it is a running away kind of day. As it turned out, she had the best reason in the world for making a journey. Her mother called, you two little hungry things, come and get your breakfast. At breakfast, Calpurnia's father said, hard times have come to the forest. She said, what are hard times? It means that everything is hard and especially for poor people. She felt the table. She laid her hand on Buggy Horse's hard back and it was true. Everything seemed harder than usual. She asked, are we poor people? I don't feel poor. Her father said, we are poor people. I make an honest living selling fish to other poor people. Now there are no fish. Nobody can catch any fish. I shall have to close my fish market and things will go hard with all of us. And here's Calpurnia's family at breakfast and the beautiful day outside. Calpurnia ate her hard grits and patted buggy horses back and she said a poem. I wish we had fish, then hard times would end. But I am not the least bit worried because everybody bees my friend. Her mother said, you can't say everybody bees my friend. It sounds as if you're talking about bees, honeybees or bumblebees. Calpurnia was delighted. She changed her poem in her mind and then she said, everybody's bees is my friend. Everybody's flowers is my flowers. Everybody's happy hours is my happy hours. All this goes on and there is no end. That's better, said her mother. You are really a smart child, but you should say, are no end. So Calpurnia said, are no end, R, R, R. And Buggy Horse said, arf, arf, arf. Her mother said, I sometimes don't know who's smartest, you or that little old Buggy Horse dog. Her father said, it won't matter who's the smartest if I can't get fish to sell to the other poor people and he went to his empty fish market. Here's Calpurnia and her bees and buggy horse. And there's her dad headed to the market. Calpurnia went outside and stood beside a tree and thought about the fish market. There was a small pond where she and buggy horse often went to fish, but she had never caught anything there except tiny minnows. Also, she used angleworms for bait, and they were squirmy and had to be kept in a glass jar. She did not like this, and she imagined that the angleworms did not like it either. She said to herself, now if I was a fish, what would I like to bite? She thought and thought, and she had a wonderful idea. She said to Buggy Horse, if I was a fish, I would only bite something unusual and something pretty. Here she is thinking by the tree, and there she is thinking about fish. She remembered some beautiful pink crepe paper left over from a birthday party. Mother dear, 
may I make some pink paper roses? Of course, my child. Her mother was very considerate and did not ask questions unless she had to. So Calpurnia made some large roses from the pink paper and tied them to her pigtail. Why don't we hear Calpurnia sing about the paper roses now? I will wear paper roses in my hair, paper roses, pink and red. Each handmade, shaped and tied in every braid, like a crown. beautiful. Calpurnia is smart and she has a beautiful voice. Now you might have noticed that she calls her dog Mr. Splinters because in the opera, just like we have people playing different characters, we have a different character playing buggy horse. So that's Mr. Splinters and he's a toy dog made of sticks. So when you come see the opera, you'll get to know him a little bit better. Back to our story. She set out with Buggy Horse and her fishing pole to find Mother Albertha, who was the wisest person in the forest. Mother Albertha was sitting in front of her little shop. She was worried about hard times too, like Calpurnia's father, for if there are no fish and one person is poor, then everybody else is poor too. And Mother Albertha had no customers at all. So here she is making her pink paper roses. And here's Mother Alberta in front of her shop. Calpurnia said, Mother Alberta, I am going fishing to keep my father from being poor. I have fished in the pond, but the fish there are so small. You are the wisest person in the forest. Would you tell me where I can catch some big fish so that hard times will be soft times? Mother Alberta rocked back and forth. She said, child, I have not breathed this to a living soul, but I will tell you, there are big fish in the secret river. Oh my, the fish, catfish, perch, bream, mudfish, and garfish, especially catfish. Is the secret river far away? Nobody knows. How will I find it? You will know the river when you see it. Just follow your nose. Thank you, Mother Alberta. When I catch the fish, I will bring you some. Child, you talk like an angel. Now, Calpurnia thought it was a foolish thing to find anything by following her nose. She said to Buggy Horse, my nose goes straight ahead. How will I know where to turn? So here she is with Mother Alberta. And here's Mother Alberta telling her to follow her nose. But she started out into the forest. The first thing she knew, a rabbit hopped by. She turned to look at him, which meant that her nose pointed to the right. So she followed her nose. After a while, a blue jay flew into a live oak tree. She turned her nose to the left to look at him. So she followed her nose. All of a sudden, she heard a sound like music. The forest had ended, and in front of her was a river a river she had never seen before. Calpurnia had found the secret river. The river was so beautiful that she sat down on a cypress knee to admire it. 
what if we had Mother Alberta sing and tell us all about the secret river? To the cypress trees, I hope you don't mind if I sit on one of your knees to admire the secret river. The cypresses clicked their green needles, which she took for permission. The river was singing as it ran by. Then she saw the fish. They were jumping and dancing, and there were so many of them that they got in each other's way. Calpurnia said to the fish, do you mind if I catch some of you to save the forest from hard times? So there's a bunny. And there's Calpurnia at the Secret River. The fish did not answer, so she took that for permission too. Now she saw a little red boat tied to the bank. It had a sign on it. The sign said, please tie me up again when you are through with me. I am so afraid of getting lost. Calpurnia stepped into the red boat with her fishing pole and the pink paper roses tied to her pigtails. Buggy Horse followed her into the boat. She pushed away from the shore. Then she took one of the pink paper roses from her braids and tied it to the hook on the end of her fishing line. The pink rose floated for a few minutes and then sank slowly down through the water. An old frog sitting on the bottom of the river saw it. He croaked, now what in the water is that thing? It's meant to catch fish, that's what it is. Well, I won't bite it, that's sure. He settled himself to watch, and before he had blinked his eyes, a huge catfish tried to swallow the pink paper rose and was handed out of the river on the end of Calpurnia's fishing line. There's the red boat and Calpurnia. And there's the catfish biting one of her pink paper roses. The old frog grunted, I knew it. There is nothing more foolish than a fish. Sitting in the red boat, Calpurnia pulled in one fish after another. Buggy horse hung over the side in excitement. Just as Mother Alberta had promised, there were more catfish than anything else. And this teased Calpurnia for two reasons. In the first place, 
The people in the forest dearly loved to eat catfish, and her father could get a higher price for them. In the second place, catfish are extremely disagreeable and try to stick everybody with the sharp barbs on their heads. Calpurnia thought that fish who go out of their way to stick people deserve to be caught. After a while, Calpurnia had as many catfish in the red boat as she could possibly carry home. She pushed the boat onto the shore and tied it carefully to the trunk of a cypress tree. She moved the fish to the ground and Buggy Horse helped her. He could only carry one fish in his mouth at a time, but he worked hard and did his best. So there she is catching the fish. And there's Buggy Horse trying to help. <laughs> Calpurnia said to him, how can we carry all these fish home? Buggy Horse looked at the fishing pole and barked. He looked at a clump of bear grass and barked. Calpurnia understood at once. Bear grass has long, thin, tough leaves, and they could be used like strong pieces of string. She broke off the leaves and passed them through the gills of the fish and tied the fish onto the fishing pole. She put the pole over her shoulder. It was very heavy with all the catfish on it. She started out for home. Calpurnia said to Buggy Horse, Mother Alberta told us to find a secret river by following my nose. Do you think we can get home the same way? So there she is with Buggy Horse, trying to figure out how to carry the fish. And there she is tying them onto her pole. And there she is carrying them home. Buggy Horse barked and she decided to try to get home the same way. A gray fox turned her nose to the left and a mother raccoon with two baby raccoons turned her nose to the right. It was getting dark. The sun had set. The night animals were coming out to play and hunt for their supper. Calpurnia heard a strange sound. A deep voice called, Ooh, -hoo, why, Ooh. Calpurnia did not know where the questions came from, but she answered bravely. I'm Calpurnia. Who are you? The boy said, Hoo -hoo -hoo. Why, it's just a hoot owl. But then she saw the hoot owl sitting on top of a dead tree. He was enormous and he did not look friendly. She wondered if he had come out to hunt for his supper. He rolled his big round eyes at her fish. He rolled his big round eyes at Buggy Horse. No doubt about it, he was very hungry. So there are the raccoons and the gray fox, and there's the hoot owl. He doesn't look friendly. Calpurnia said quickly, please, Mr. Hoot Owl, can I give you a nice fresh catfish for your supper? The hoot owl cocked his head on one side and flapped his wings. He flew down to into a wild plum tree, plum tree beside her. It was a great deal of trouble to, to untie the catfish from the fishing pole, but she picked out the biggest fish of all and laid it on the clean grass. The hoot owl swooped down and began eating it at once without even saying thank you. Calpurnia said, you are welcome anyway. The forest was so dark, she could not see her nose in front of her face. So of course she could not follow her nose. I'm not a bit worried, she said out loud. She was really worried, but she said it to cheer up Buggy Horse. So there they are. There's a hoot owl swooping down for the catfish. And look how dark the forest is. All of a sudden, she saw a huge black shadow in front of her. The shadow moved and Buggy Horse growled. The shadow was a big black bear. <sighs> Calpurnia's heart went thump, thump, thump. Buggy Horse tried to hide behind the catfish. Calpurnia thought, maybe the bear is hungry too. Mr. Bear, could I interest you in a nice fresh catfish for your supper, she asked. The bear snuffled as if he needed a handkerchief and he came closer. She did not want to pick out the biggest catfish she pulled out two from the fishing pole as fast as possible and laid them on the grass. She did not run away, but she hurried. She called over her shoulder, you're entirely welcome, just in case the bear had thanked her. So there she goes on her way. And there's the bear eating the catfish. 
Then Calpurnia saw something crouching ahead of her. It was a panther. <gasps> she did not know whether he was friendly or unfriendly, but she thought, I'm sure he's hungry. I expect hard times have even come to the panthers in the forest. So she said, Mr. Panther, you are sort of a cat and cats love fish. And I should like to give you some nice fresh, fresh catfish for your supper. She was not so frightened now, and she took three catfish from her fishing pole and laid them on the clean grass. The panther began eating them at once, and he purred so loudly that she knew he was saying, thank you. She said, you are certainly most welcome. She said a poem. If somebody scares you, the thing to do is give somebody something to do. Then they never bother you. Sometimes they say, thank you. There they are. Calpurnia and Buggy Horse went on, and then the full moon rose and the forest was as bright as day. She smelled night flowers blooming. A white crane flew straight across the moon. It dropped a white feather, and Calpurnia picked it up and tucked it in her hair. And then she saw that they were out of the forest and on the path home. Buggy Horse barked joyfully and ran ahead. Calpurnia said, it will be nice to go home this minute, but I promised Mother Alberta some fish. So come, my dear dog. There's the crane. And there she is, almost home. But she has to go see Mother Alberta. Mother Alberta was just turning off the light in her shop when she heard the knock on her door. Who is that knocking so late, she called. It is Calpurnia with your fish. Mother Alberta's eyes were as big as saucers when she saw the fish. Child, where did you catch all these catfish? Why, in the secret river where you told me to go. Oh, my goodness to the mayhaw bush. Oh, my goodness to the swamp maple. How many catfish do you want, Mother Alberta? Calpurnia asked. Oh, my goodness to the redbud tree. Just give me one catfish, child. Just one nice fat catfish. Calpurnia chose the nicest and fattest and Mother Alberta wrapped it in her apron. They all said, good night, and Calpurnia and Buggy Horse hurried home. Look how excited she is. She's so happy for the fish. And now they're headed home. All of the lamps were burning in the house. Calpurnia's mother and father put their arms around her and began to cry. Dear daughter, we thought you were lost in the forest. Oh no, I just followed my nose. And see, I brought fish to turn hard times to soft times. I gave some away, but it was necessary. Her mother and father could not believe their eyes when they saw the catfish. Child, how did you catch all these fish? How did you carry them home by yourself? Where have you been? But Calpurnia was so tired and so sleepy that she could not answer. She did not know another thing until it was morning. Her father had gone to his market to sell the catfish. See how happy her parents are to see her? And there she is off to bed. And her father off to the market to sell the fish. A man who had not had anything to eat for a long time bought the first catfish. He said he would pay for it as soon as he had eaten it and earned money for a day's work, for he had been too weak from hunger to work. A woman who had not had anything to eat for a long time bought the second catfish, and she said she would pay for it as soon as she had eaten it and earned money for a day's work, for she had been too weak from hunger to work. All the townspeople from the forest bought catfish and ate them and felt strong again and went out into the world and found work to do. They earned money, and that night they all paid Calpurnia's father for the catfish and had money to spare. Mother Alberta had six customers in her shop, and so hard times in the forest turned to soft times. There they are buying the fish and turning hard times to soft times. One day, Calpurnia and Buggy Horse started out to find the secret river again. They searched all that day and all the next day and the next. Calpurnia followed her nose this way and that way. 
She found strange flowers and strange birds and strange little pools of water, but she could not find the river. So she went to Mother Alberta. Mother Alberta, she said, I cannot find the secret river. Child, she said, this is a sad thing to tell you. There is not any secret river. But Mother Alberta, you told me how to find it and I found it. I want to find it again. Mother Alberta rocked back and forth. She said, child, sometimes a thing happens once and does not ever happen anymore. Calpurnia said, but I want to catch more catfish in the river. Mother Alberta said, child, you caught catfish when catfish were needed. Hard times have turned to soft times, so you will not find the river again. But I saw it. It must be somewhere. Mother Alberta rocked back and forth. The secret river is in your mind, she said. You can go there any time you want to, in your mind. Close your eyes and you will see it. So there she is searching for the secret river. And here she is with Mother Alberta, telling her the secret river is in her mind. Calpurnia was delighted. She skipped all the way home. Buggy Horse chased his peculiar tail. Calpurnia sat down under a magnolia tree and closed her eyes. She saw the river. It was as beautiful as she remembered it. She made a poem. And why don't we have Calpurnia sing her poem for us? Time for a new poem, Mr. Splinter. Secret river is in my mind. It's always there for me to find. Everything. Marjorie, thank you so much, Opera Orlando, for allowing us to present these um, short, you know, previews to the Secret River. We are very grateful to be able to share that today. And I do have some questions for Marjorie. If anyone else has a question, you can put those in the comments. So, Marjorie, what is it like to be a writer? Well, as I said at the beginning, Sometimes it's just hard to know what to write about, but I find that once I'm able to put my thoughts into words, I can go to places that I may not have ever been before and take other people there with me. And I can get some of my feelings about how I'm sad and how times are hard. And when I put them into words, maybe I can help other people have those feelings too. And then maybe we can find a way to feel better from reading all these words. And we can learn about using our imagination and caring for other people. And it's pretty great to be able to do things like that just with words. Yes, that was an inspiring story you just told, especially in the times, you know, now it's just, it's classic. Thank you for sharing. My pleasure. So, what are you most excited about with your book, Becoming an Opera? Well, 
the great thing about opera is that it is all about sung stories. So we get to have all of the wonderful words and then we get to put music with it, which make the words, it makes the words take flight. And in this opera, I understand that we're going to have puppets. And yes. so my words are gonna not only have music helping them take flight, but we'll have all of these wonderful visual things helping them take flight. Um, we're going to get to meet, a, meet the owl and the bear and the panther and a bunch of fish and a beautiful bird that's going to help lead Calpurnia home. And so we get not only the words on the page, but we get people acting out the words on the page and singing about the words on the page. And then we get to have, just like we had a feast of fish, we'll have a feast for our eyes of all of these puppets. So there's just so much to see. And I'm very excited to see how they bring my book to life. That is going to be amazing. That's going to look incredible. So excited. I think so. Um, oh, we have a question. Is the opera family friendly? I hear there is a show and tell with the puppets after the opera that kids can stay for. Cool. The opera is very family friendly. I think uh, the story, all good stories that, uh, well, stories that are good enough for children are, should be good enough for adults too. So I think that this story uh, resonates with adults as well as with children, but I think the children will absolutely be carried away by their imaginations and by getting to see all of these puppets and getting to hear such pretty music and then getting to meet the puppets afterward. So that's pretty great that you get to see the imagination and the make-believe, and then you get to see a sort of more realistic version of them. So you get to see all aspects of the story come to life. That is incredible. Um, oh, my five-year-old would like to know what made you think of The Secret River? Well, I fell in love with this part of the country. I'm, I'm not originally from Florida, but when I came down here, I fell in love with the nature. I fell in love with the people. And I've always wanted to write a story that was written specifically for a child. A lot of you may know my, my other book, The Yearling, and I didn't really write that for children, but this book I wrote specifically for children. And I wanted to tell a story about hope and about the resourcefulness and the bravery and the, the spirit that never failed all of these people that I had grown to love so much here in my transplanted home. And so this story, captures all of that. Uh, it captures the people I love, the place I love, and the power of the imagination. That is wonderful. Thank you, Lakeisha, for your question. Thank you Thank for you. your question. Um, before we wrap everything up, I just wanted to share, if you're interested in seeing or learning more about Opera Orlando's production of The Secret River, you can visit operaorlando.org and we'll be putting that link in the chat again. So be sure to check that out. You can also learn more about their upcoming productions at their website, operaorlando.org. Thank you, Marjorie, so much for being with us today. We greatly appreciate you spending your time with us and answering all of our questions. I don't see any more questions in the chat. Thank you, Gabriel. And definitely be sure to check out The Secret River from the library. You can read that before you go to the opera and get everything, you know, be able to read it yourself and be able to hear the wonderful original music. So thank you so much, Marjorie. That will conclude today's event. I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe out there. And thank you so much for watching today's event with us. Thank you again, Marjorie. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to find out when we have new fun and informative videos for you. Orange County Library System is your place to learn, grow, connect.